Hello, everyone, and welcome to the RV Inspection and Care Podcast. And today's podcast is about how and why you should use your RV to stay close with your family all across the U.S. Now, before we begin, let me invite everyone who's listening to subscribe to my podcast, and that way you won't miss any of the episodes that are coming up. And please be sure to visit my website, too, at rvinspectionandcare.com. There's a lot of great information, a lot of articles on RVing that will be very helpful for you. So please visit. Now, let's get back to our subject today, and that's about how and why you should be using an RV to stay close with your family all across the U.S. if that's possible for you. Now, you know, first of all, let's just say years ago, a lot of families lived close to one another. So it was kind of easy to maintain close relationships and that kind of thing. But these days, well, it's not uncommon to see many family members that really are living in various places all across the country. And that makes it a real challenge to be able to maintain close relationships like you'd really like to be able to do. The question comes up, how do you really stay in touch that way? How can you stay close with them? Well, in-person visits, I'm sure you'll agree, are best uh, to be able to stay close to someone. I mean, it's fine to have phone calls and use social media and email and those kinds of things. But there's something about that personal contact that really makes a relationship live. So what I'm going to cover today is how that RVing can help you do exactly that. And let's discuss the reasons why, uh, why it can be beneficial for you. And the number one reason that we're going to start with is, well, if your family members can't come to you, you can go to them. You know, a lot of our children or younger family members, they're still involved in uh, life itself, in work, in raising kids, and all those kinds of things. And so some of our family members may just be too busy to be able to come to you very often. So instead, you can take your RV and go to them. That's great. Now, the next uh, good point is that you can stay much longer with them if you bring your RV because you actually are kind of like bringing your house with you. So you don't have to really leave very quickly so you can get a longer visit with them. The next point is you can determine how long to stay. You know, uh, you can decide whether you can stay a week, two weeks, a month, two months, whatever it is, you can make the determination and then you're not overstaying or not understaying. You can really determine what's best for you and that family member. The next point is you don't interfere with their busy schedule either. Because, see, you brought your house with you. So they're still in their house living their daily life and, and going through their daily schedule that's no doubt busy and all of that. Got so many things going on. But you're not right there interfering with that schedule. They don't feel like they have to be entertaining you or anything all the time. So that's really good. Now, the next point is that you don't feel like you're imposing on them when you bring your RV. You're not living in their house and, you know, they kind of have to make sure that you're all taken care of while they're going about their daily activities. It's not an imposition in any way upon them. You have your home and you go back to your home and you take care of your life and they're taking care of their life, but you're able to be together at, at times because you're in close proximity and that makes things better for building relationships. The next point is that the times you spend together when you have your RV and they have their home is usually happy times because you can make arrangements for happy times. 
good things to do together. You know, maybe having a meal together that's kind of special or getting together and going someplace or, you know, having an adventure together, that kind of thing. And so the times you spend are usually very happy, quality, enjoyable times. And that's because you have your RV. The next point is that you can develop deeper relationships this way with grandchildren, nieces and nephews, you know, little family members, because if they never see you as they're growing up or see you very seldom, well, it's hard for them to really develop that deep feeling and relationship for you. But when you come and visit, and maybe you visit for an extended period, they see you several times during that, and they kind of get to know you and all of that, well, then you can develop a deeper relationship with those children that are now in the family. And that's really good for a lot of us. Uh, the next point is that you can see as many family members or as little family members as you wish during the year. You know, you not only can just see those that you know well, you can actually start visiting extended family members. If you got the time to do that, you can sort of get to know ones that you have never gotten to know before by going and making a brief visit there with them in your RV. Now, the next point is that while you're there in that area where your loved ones are, well, you could also then go out and have RV adventures from time to time, you know, because they're going to be busy with their life. And so during the week, especially when everybody's really busy, uh, that gives you an opportunity to maybe take a few days and take a side trip. Uh, take your RV within a day's trip somewhere and see something in the area that you can really enjoy. And so you can use visits with your family members to be like a home base to go out and have RVing adventures with. And that works well too. Now, the last point I want to make is that on top of all of this, your family could actually come and visit you in your RV if you're like, for instance, in an RV park. And many times parks have amenities in them, especially for little ones. They could come and visit you. And that's kind of a nice outing for them. You know, it's not just a you going to visit them. They get to do something different by coming to visit you and enjoying the park's amenities and so on. So, that's another advantage of RVing to visit your family. Well, there's a lot of great reasons, and really I haven't covered all of them, but you can kind of get the point that we have an opportunity these days to be mobile and to use that mobility to develop good relationships within our family. Now, to do that, though, let me give you a few suggestions. Number one, find the RV that's going to fit you best for spending extended time in it. So if you need a little more space, well, then you, you really should get an RV that has the kind of space and comforts that you feel will help you be able to enjoy it over the long haul while you're making these visits on family members. Also, smaller RVs like um, Class Bs and B Pluses, well, they kind of are really good for what's called mooch docking. And what that means is you actually could go and visit your family and stay in their driveway or maybe on their property somewhere. Uh, and a lot of people in the neighborhood would never even know that an RV is there. So that's a way of being able to camp and do so really cheaply by visiting your relatives. And yet you're not in the house. You're not in their home where you're kind of, you know, maybe feel a little bit uh, like you're imposing on them. So those small RVs can come in really handy there. But let's suppose you need a little more space. Well, if you've got a larger RV, it means that you have got to uh, find RV parks or campgrounds where you can go and spend some time in that area. Now, to do that, I'm going to give you a little warning. These days, you've got to prepare in advance. Don't think you can do this spur of the moment in most cases. 
you'll probably need to make advance reservations six months or more in advance. And it can be a good time if you're going to spend several weeks or a month or more there, it's a good time to make arrangements and find out what their rates are, not just for the nightly rate, but what are their weekly rates? What are their monthly rates at that park? What are their multi-monthly rates there? And that way you can get the cheapest camping cost and nightly cost for your camping possible. So you can check all of that out in advance if you've got a bigger RV uh, and uh, you need to do that to lay it out in advance and know where you're going. Now, the next point is also consider Thousand Trails as a way to keep your costs really low. Now, Thousand Trails is a membership system and I've talked about it before here on the channel. It allows you to go to over 200 parks in the full system all across the U.S., and you pay one fee each year. You pay a dues amount, and then you can stay essentially for zero dollars a night with full hookups at these 200-plus campgrounds across the U.S. Now, if these campgrounds happen to be in the area where your family members live, well, then you get the benefit of really cheap campground costs to be able to go and visit there. And that can help you be able to spend longer time uh, with your relatives and with your families as a result of that. So consider Thousand Trails to keep your camping costs low. And as far as traveling costs are concerned, consider Harvest Hosts and Boondockers Welcome because they're great ways that uh, you can keep your camping or your travel costs rather down as you're going in between places to visit. As you're on the road, these are two ways to keep your nightly costs really, really low. The final thing I want to mention is that in between your actual visits with your family, because you're building these relationships, it's a great thing to be able to FaceTime or Skype with them and that way you can kind of keep up with them, they can keep up with you, and you're continuing that relationship that you've been building while you have been visiting the, the your family members that are really important to you. Well, let me say this, we have had experience with all of this because we have a family that involves a daughter and her family in Arizona. We have a son and his family in New England and we love them very much, and we want to spend time with them and really enjoy them. And, of course, we have grandchildren, too. So RVing allows us to do this. It allows us to go and spend time with family members that are on opposite coasts of the U.S., and we can actually spend extended periods of time and really have a good time with them, really get to know them. They really get to know us. And we have a close relationship as a result of that. So what I'm telling you today, all of this information that I'm providing today is really through our own experience. And we have seen real benefits by doing it. And hopefully what I've shared with you will help you do the same. The bottom line is this. Don't let distance separate you from your family, not in this day and age. Use RVing and RV travel to help you keep your family close. Well, that's it for now. Have safe and happy travels, my friends. Until next time. Mm -hmm.